welcome back to my YouTube channel. This week's video features something that's very, very exciting. It's a brand new transfer from Dixie Bill Paint. So here's the piece that I'm going to use to put that transfer on. It's a pretty piece, but it is a reproduction and it did have a few little bits that needed repairing but I'm just gonna skip that bit because, you know, it's a bit boring. So we're gonna go straight ahead with the prep. I took all the handles off. I gave it a clean with Dixie Bell's White Lightning. I scuff sanded it with my electric sander. And then I went straight in with a color scheme that I knew I wanted to use, but I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to use it. So I just went in really, really roughly with three colors from Dixie Bell's Chalk Mineral Paint range. And that is Cobalt Blue, which is the first color. This colour that I'm using now is called Mermaid Tail and then the deeper blue is called Antebellum Blue. So I wanted to use those three colours, I just wasn't sure on the placement and how I wanted to do it so I just started applying them. And this is actually done over on Dixie Bell's YouTube channel during a live video that I did so that's why I'm kind of chatting a bit in the, in the, in the shot there. And I just kind of played around with the placement as you can see. And I knew, obviously, that this transfer was going to be put on here, although I didn't say it at the time because it hadn't been released yet. So I just kind of played around with those three colours. So once I'd done the live, I knew I definitely wanted those to stick with those colours. However, I felt like they might have been a little bit too overpowering, bearing in mind I knew that the transfer was going on this piece. So I went in with the darker blues so i'm using a combination of cobalt blue and antebellum blue and i covered up quite a lot of the mermaid tail because i just felt like it was going to be way too overpowering and i wanted the feature of this piece to be the transfer so i wanted a really kind of layered bohemian kind of look anyway so the fact that these three colours are kind of over the top of one another and mixed together isn't going to be a problem. So I went in with pretty much all over antebellum blue and then I just used the mermaid tail on the highlights of the drawers. The shot's gone out of focus slightly. I don't know why. It's my camera playing up. Oh, we're back again. Um, so I went in with the darker blue and then used the paler blue just on the bits of the drawers that are kind of raised. So like the curved areas. And I used the Best Dang brush to just kind of blend that out in a really kind of smoky kind of blend. I didn't want this to be a perfect blend. I just wanted it to be kind of, kind of a little bit tonal. So not too much emphasis on the colours that I'm using because I wanted the emphasis to be on the transfer. So as you can see, it's now pretty much all cobalt blue and antebellum blue. And then I just went ahead and added the smallest amount of mermaid tail on the sort of highest point of the drawers before they start to kind of curve away. And that's just going to add a little bit of three dimension to the drawers and obviously add a little bit of highlights and lowlights. And the way I'm doing that is just using my water to keep the paint wet. A little spritz of water is all you need to keep the paint open and I'm just adding a small amount of mermaid tail at a time using the best dang brush to kind of melt that into the other colours so that it is kind of a bohemian kind of blend and then I was just really building on that so I built up the mermaid tail until I had the kind of amount of coverage that I wanted so I didn't want to go really really blue as I did in the first instance with this. I didn't want the mermaid tail to be too overbearing. I just wanted to pick out the, the curvature of the drawers. And then once I was happy with how the paint was looking, I went around the drawers and just distressed them because I just feel like that tiny little hint of warm toned wood is going to kind of pop against the blue. Plus it's a technique that I really like doing. I like a little bit of distressing here and there. It's not for everyone, but I like it. And then here is the transfer. This is the fun part. So there's four sheets to this transfer and it's a continuous pattern across two of the sheets. So two, you get two sheets of each pattern, if that makes sense. And I actually helped design this transfer. So it's a little bit of me. And the reason I wanted to design this is because I feel like it's going to be a really versatile transfer. You can cut all of these patterns up and mix and match them to suit your piece so that each time you use it, you can get a really kind of individual look. 
and I knew exactly what I wanted to do with this. I wanted to fill those three drawers with the different kind of patterns that the transfer has, starting at the bottom and then working my way up. So I just basically started by cutting all the patterns up and then making sure I had enough of the transfer to fill the drawer and then I just started applying it. So the way that you apply a transfer is when you're pleased with the placement, you remove the backing off the transfer and then you just press down lightly, which puts your transfer in place. And then in the pack, you get a stick, which is basically going to remove the transfer from the sheet and apply it onto your furniture. So I'm gonna start with the bottom drawer first and I'm just gonna work really slowly and just put that pattern down and then line the second sheet up which has obviously got the identical pattern it's also a continuous pattern so you get the impression that it is one continuous pattern across the whole drawer and I just basically worked out my placement of pattern on the drawers that I thought looked best so once the transfer is in place what I then do is just go over the entire piece with my finger. Now this transfer's got quite a lot of delicate parts to it, um, quite intricate patterns, so I just really rub it over gently with my finger and that's just going to ensure that it's stuck down properly. And then I just repeated that process, the applying the transfer is the easy part, the bit that obviously I wanted to get right was the placement of the patterns to make sure that it kind of flowed nicely down the drawer fronts. So I just played around with placement um, a little bit until I made sure that I had the right pieces in the right place. If you wanted to do this with the drawers in position, um, that would probably be a really easy way to make sure you had all the pieces in the right place before you started actually applying them. And you can also use a little bit of painter's tape to hold them in place to make sure that you've got the placement correct. Um, I roughly knew what I was going to do, so I definitely knew I wanted this on the bottom. And then I wanted the pattern to kind of fade up to the top so that the colours, the stronger colours of the transfer were at the base and the kind of more delicate pattern was at the top. So like I said, when I was looking at helping design this transfer, I wanted it to be really, really versatile and something that could be used in lots of different places on lots of different sized pieces of furniture or craft items as well. So with that in mind, there are pieces of the pattern that are larger, like the piece that I'm applying now. And then there's also some really smaller pieces that could add some really pretty unique detail onto like jewelry boxes or smaller pieces of furniture. So this one isn't just for larger pieces of furniture. It can also be used on smaller items as well. So this is one of the smaller pieces of the transfer that I'm applying now to the top of the drawer, but it just makes it really versatile. I know I've said that several times, but it does actually make it really versatile. And it also means that you can build your own pattern to suit the piece that you are putting it onto. So I couldn't fit a larger piece onto this drawer because I'd already put that large piece at the bottom. So I cut up two of the smaller pieces and stacked those to give the illusion that the pattern had completely kind of fit the drawer front when in fact it hasn't it's just several pieces chopped up and added together So this piece that I'm applying now is actually my favourite piece of the whole transfer. It's super pretty and delicate and the pattern is, is just really, really nice. Um, so what I did for this piece, instead of using my finger to burnish it, I actually used a microfiber cloth and just really gently rubbed over the pattern. And that works equally as well. Bearing in mind I've still got a little bit of texture on these drawers because I did use sea spray when I put my original coat of paint down. So this with a microfiber cloth works really well. You can also burnish with a finishing pad, um, which is a Dixie Bell product. And that again, just burnishes the transfer onto the piece. Or like you say, I, I did it with my finger. I, I just use a combination of various different techniques depending on what I've got to hand. And then the final piece went on, and I still do have some pieces left of this transfer. I didn't use it all, and this is what it's looking like so far. 
So transfers do need sealing onto your piece. I'm using clear coat in satin with um, a Dixie Bell synthetic brush and I did two coats of this in total and you, that's basically just going to lock your transfer on your piece and stop it from lifting. And just to kind of bring this together and give it that kind of bohemian kind of feel, I went back in with Mermaid Tail and I used a palette knife and just scraped a little bit around the edges. Now, I use a minimal amount of paint for this because it is a really pigmented colour and I didn't want to go too kind of crazy. That's how much paint I use on my palette knife. I just dip it in the paint and then scrape it off on the side of the pot and that kind of gives you the right amount. If you put too much on your palette knife, you just end up with a huge glob of paint and that's not what I wanted. So this is just going to kind of... Like I say, give it that bohemian look and just add a little bit of interest around the draw edges. And once that was dry, I used Best Dang Wax in Black to add shading around all the edges of the drawers. I also did the same effect on the sides and the top as well, which I'll show you at the end. Um, but this is just going to add a little bit of dimension. You know how much I love my coloured waxes. Brown and black are up there among my favourite products to use. I'm using black on this one because I've used really dark colours and I feel like it can handle the, the black wax. If I was using paler colours, like pinks maybe, I probably would have gone for a brown wax, but I feel like this, this suits the black wax. So I just went around the edges with a premium chip brush and a little bit of that black wax, and because I've already put that clear coat down, it's gonna act as a barrier, which means I get more control and placement over that black wax. And then I'm just using the excess product that's left on my brush to kind of feather that into the centre of the drawers so that there isn't such a harsh line where the wax stops. Um, so I'm just kind of feathering it in to give a really kind of faded look. So this is how the top of the piece finished up. Obviously you can just see that little bit of highlight in the centre with the mermaid tail. Here's a little close up of the transfer which you can see more detail on on my social media channels as well and here's how I stage the final piece. Thank you for watching the video as always I hope you enjoyed it I can't wait to see what you create with this transfer make sure you hit the subscribe button and I will catch you next time bye